All right, welcome back to GM Tips. GM Rick here, and we're going to talk a little bit on adventure paths. And th again, this is an adventure path that can be used either in Pathfinder or in D&D 5e or in 3.5 or in 4 or, or in basically in any fantasy setting you want to take it over to. Um, you got to do some monster conversions and some other things. Now, I love the anniversary addition to this. Basically, the Curse of the Crimson Throne. What is it about it that's appealing to me as a GM? Well, it's several things for me as a GM that are appealing about it. Maybe if this thing wants to do it. Hang on here. Got to get this restarted for mini GM. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not doing what it should do. So what do I like about it as an adventure path? Well, number one, I do like the pre-written adventure paths. I have always been a huge fan of pre-written stuff, and, and here's the reason why. I can take any of the pre-written stuff and run it either as is, or I can do modifications. Now, for me, I love doing mods because it allows me to customize things for my campaign. And that's really what I want to do. For me, as a GM, and, and many of you guys have known this from what I've said, I don't have the time, unfortunately, to sit down and spin a homebrew campaign for months and then get it up and ready to go. I just don't. Um, being a dad of three and, and being a fiancé, just too much of a time suck. So I like to use out-of-the-box campaigns. Now, some of you may feel very differently. You may like doing your own thing. You may love writing your own adventure paths, modules, campaigns, dungeons, and that's great. And again, no knocks to you guys. Continue the great work. For me, I like playing what's already been built. And I like taking it and flavoring it in such a way that if my players are to read all the information, they're just not going to walk down that primrose path and figure out everything. So, Curse of the Crimson Throne Anniversary Edition. Curse of the Crimson Throne was a very early adventure uh, path in uh, Pathfinder, back when it first came out. As you know, Pathfinder, when it first came out, if you're not familiar with the system, it uses the, the inner sea campaign um, setting, which is termed Galarian. The name of the world, like Faerun is D&Ds or Greyhawk. This is Galarian. And Galarian is a world full of very rich adventure and crazy places to, to explore and visit. Early on, they spent a lot of time writing material for a uh, country by the name of Varizia. And Varicia is a very diverse and interesting place. It is a place that has been around since the fall of an ancient race, which they are like the Atlanteans of their world, the Aslanti. The Aslanti ruled to, rose to a certain level of power. And then there was the earth-shattering event that destroyed... Um, the world, and basically, uh, with the death of Aerodin, the the living god of the Aslanti, and of law and order, all this collapsed. Varicia continued to kind of eke its way out through the Dark Ages, and from it were several types of people. There was, of course, some of Aslanti mixes in the people there, because the Aslanti had colonized it at the time. Um... They turned it into um, Shin Sala, uh, Zin Shalast, which was the colony of um, Zin, the, the Ruin Lord. And from that, the Empire fell during the apocalyptic event. And then it rose from the ashes. Well, there were native people that were always, already there. There were the Shonti barbarians, which are, instead of having the Halots, which populate most of the rest of Galarian. The Shonti were another type of tribal people that were up in the area. Along with the Shonti were the Varicians. And the Varicians are gypsy-like people. They're very flavorful, colorful people. Well, later on, when things came out of the ashes, about a thousand years before the current time, the Chelish Empire sent a colonial force to try to colonize Varicia for its resources and just to expand their influence. Um, so cities like Corvosa 
cities like Magnamar uh, uh, and, and various other cities, Riddleport, all became havens for the Chelish people. And the Chelish people looked at the um, locals as backward bumpkins, basically. Third-class citizens at best, and there's a lot of animosity um, with the colonization, as like there isn't any colonization. So, that's kind of the background flavor to this. Now, the setting is in the city of Corvosa, which is the capital. Corvosa has a king, and the king of Corvosia, Corvosa is having issues health-wise. He's got a beautiful, beautiful bride that the people kind of question her. They question her as this kind of... Um, she, she has a sugar daddy type of conflict. Con, um, um, God, I just lost my thought. Sugar daddy complex. So they don't see her as a legitimate heir necessarily if anything happens to him. But needless to say, there are circumstances that take over that send that whole area and the adventurers who can either be from that area, which I would suggest... Uh, doing, uh, I would at least make them Varisian or someone from there or a Chelish colonist that comes up through there. It throws it into turmoil. And what I love about this adventure path, it is a roller coaster ride because you're trying to figure out it's a who done it, um, who made the king sick, what would happen if the king were to die, what would happen if the new queen takes over. What would happen if there's outside influences that are not even being considered? What happens to that whole city and the area if things break down? Would there be riots? Would there be other things going on? What if there are dark forces that are per pursuing machinations as we go along? So I will say this here. If you don't want, as a player, to have spoilers come up right now, Leave the podcast. Just say, that should titillate you to want to play. Leave it. Yes, I'm going to give you about a 10 second to pause it type of thing. I know, annoying, huh? But at least it lets people not say that I gave them spoilers. All right, for the GMs running it, this is cool. The queen cacks the king. She kills him off. Why? Other than the fact that she just wants to take everything over and be a, a, a debutante. That's not the reason. The queen finds a hidden thing with a piece of an old dragon that is nasty. And that dragon is basically causing chaos in the whole realm. So, this happens. Now, you're moving to the next phase of the event. You are moving to where um, you have to deal with the city in the turmoil of the death of their king. There are riots going on. There's blood in the streets. It is crazy. People are causing damage. Things are getting blown up. Keep in mind, this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. And this thing is just crazy, crazy, crazy. And from there, the party plunges into helping the local militia and army to keep order without killing citizens um, where, where necessary. And the criminal elements are trying to rise up. Well, the queen then hires the aid of some assassins, some well-known ones, the Red Mantis. And the Red Mantis, what they end up doing is they poison the... They come up with a, a, a disease that takes out the native Shonti and... Varician population without killing the Chelish for the queen. So you begin this in the lower class portions of the slums of the cities. That's part two. And that takes off from there. And then, then we aren't even done yet. So now you go on a chasing path because the queen gets rid of the guard around them that is the king's guard. And she replaces them with the gray maids. And because she's vain, she requires the grain maidens to scar themselves so that they cannot compare to her beauty. 
This is the influence of this dragon piece of body that's doing this to her and driving her crazier than a loon. Um, so, now, mind you, we are only halfway through. <laughs> so, now that takes you, just that portion right there, takes your players from first level to eighth level. Now, there's a whole nother thing. They have to escape from Corvosa. And basically the city is, is going nuts. And so the party has to get out of the, the influence of the, the blue worm Kazavan and what he's done to the queen. And basically, queen, let me see if I pronounce this right, Iolosia. And, and go try to restore order. Well, they have to go out to the Emperor of Old Corvosa and take the Emperor of Old Corvosa down. Because they're in Old Corvosa right now, where all this craziness and death is going on. So they have to face the Emperor, which is kind of a nutball. Um, and then, and then, after that, you have the Wrath of Arconis. Um, he's the criminal lord of that old empire. So in doing this, you have to fight the criminal elements. So now you're dealing with the criminal web of what is Corvosa. So you get in the underbelly. Yes, sweetie. 21 days to my birthday. High five. 21 days to your birthday. Happy, happy child about her sixth birthday. All right. So now, then you go to the history of ashes. So now you're going to deal with the maidens and escape the city and try to earn the respect of the Shonti and try to get help for this city. Because now, um, it, it, it's just nuts what's going on with this dragon and his influence. And it takes you down to the bitter end where you're trying to redeem some of the Grey Maidens, but you're also trying to take the Queen out. And it becomes a fest of um, ancient things that come out of the time of Zin, as well as um, just the masterminding of this dragon's influence on the Queen. And she becomes quite a powerful entity. And at the end, you have to battle with that element. So I'm not trying to give too much away, but it is a roller coaster ride from the beginning because you're trying to save the city of Corvosa and the Empire from ruin at the hands of a blue dragon's influence through the current queen and her vanity. Basically, he's taking control of her, his, his very essence and evil, to try to destroy what is now the current queen. Corvosan Empire. I love it. Now, they've revamped a lot of the characters in there, the NPCs. That was one of the things I loved about it. They didn't try to change the plot much, but they added some more meat to the story, some more adventures and side adventures, as well as revamped some of the NPCs and gave them a little buff up using some of the new classes. So that's a really cool thing. They give you a guide. I love the fact that you have a guide not only to the city, but you have a guide to the cinder lands around the city up there, and in, in it's a major part of um, Varicia. They give you how to use hero cards, because you're going to use hero cards in here to do different things, and you're going to use it throughout the aspect. And what they've done is they've given you the hero cards throughout the whole adventure. So if you look here, they're giving it to you out of the whole adventure. So, they have the Herald cards at Seven Days to the Grave, The Edge of Anarchy, The History of Ashes, Escape from Old Corvosa, Skeletons of Scarwall, which are the undead portion of it, and then Crown of Fangs. So you get to do heroes with your players throughout all of this. Um, it's really cool because it can really benefit the party, help the party, hurt the party. It has a little bit of everything. Um, then they give you blood and pain, or pain, which they talk about the worshippers of Ergothoa and Zan Kuthan. Now, Zan Kuthan is kind of a nut job, and you get to meet some of Zan Kuthan's nasties in here. He's a deity that started out as the son of the wolf, which was the original deity. Um, he is sister to um, the goddess of beauty on Galeria. Shellen. But he gets kind of bitter. Something happens to him, and he goes out to the Dark Vale, which is Cthulhu. And he comes back different. He comes back with piercings. 
he comes back looking almost like a chitin, which are these, basically the best thing I put it to is Hellraiser Cenobites. He's a nut job. And his, but he is about law, order, and pain. And he is a tyrant of a god. And so you get to deal with a little bit of this. And they've updated it to deal with some of his aspects because you're going to run into his people. Then it gives you all the equipment and magic together, which I love that. But it also then gives you the NPC codex. And it gives you your own NPC codex for all the primary NPCs. I love this in the Shackled City, where they give you this. And then as a GM, if you're having to go through, you've got one place that tells you where they appear and where their stats are. What a nice thing to manage. They also give you a couple of it back here. Um, they introduce a Rakshasa into the bunch, as well as some other nasty, nasty stuff. Um, but you get some real cool classes. I love the Grey Maidens, and, and um, I love the uh, Summoners and the Nasties that they give you in here for the NPCs. And they even give you, dun, 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 they even use the Vigilante class, because there's a good use for it in there with one of the NPCs. So it's an updating to the adventure path itself. But this very much has the feel, if you've ever played 3.5 of the Shackled City. It's why I love the, the anniversary editions of the Rise of the Ruin Lords and this. And I hope that Paizo does many more of these. Because in my mind, you take something that you get to see how it played with players and, and, the, and a generation before. You get to see the little bit of mistakes and tweaks. You get some updates in classes because maybe at the time you didn't have a class or a... Um, a archetype that matched it really well, but later on you develop those archetypes for another adventure path and you go on, gee, I wish I would have had that for Second Darkness or for um, Serpent Skull or for one of these others. And you're able to incorporate that. This book right here gives you pretty much everything you need outside of the, the core books that you're going to have to have to run the adventure. You don't have to run 10 places. The gazetteers are here. It's all here. Now, it is around, <laughs> for those of you that feel overwhelmed, 500 pages. But it is totally an adventure path contained. And it's at the $60 price tag. Well, each of these adventure paths now are $24.99 a piece. Do the math. It's half the cost of buying the adventure path. Now, you got to wait for them, and you got to hope that they're going to do them. But for me, I have the original, and I've looked at it versus this, and I love this. I've got both. But for me, I love the idea of what I have. So, that's it. Again, it's about a 19, 20-minute dive into this. I could have gone more into depth, but you guys always ask me, what do I like about it? Well, these are what I like about it. These are the positives. Um, is it worth the buy? Yeah, I... I Guys and ladies, I think any of these adventure paths are worth a buy. I have yet to come across one that I've hated. I like every single one that Paizo has done. Um, because they do something unique and different in each one. You don't have to buy them. If you don't want to run that area of the world, fine. But you got to think about it. How many adventure paths do they have right now? Well, if you look at my wall over there. See that middle wall? That's all the adventure paths that there are. So, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think 18 is the current one. So they have 18 adventure paths. Think about it. An adventure path is a campaign. A campaign lasts how long? A campaign lasts, on average, if you're not playing every week, multiple times a week, a year and a half. So it's 19 years worth of adventure paths. I think it would be good to run Pathfinder for quite a long time. Or convert it to your D&D games. Or convert it to Dungeon World. Or convert it to 13th Age. You can move the deities over to the, to the different ones. So what I'm going to do is Shackled City. I'm going to convert it to Pathfinder. Why? Because I love the setting. It's a beautiful setting. Um, it's not that hard to convert. And in fact, a lot of people will convert them 
on the Paizo website. So you can go on the Paizo website under the message boards and look for conversions of Adventure Paths to 5e or 3.5. Bet you they got them. <laughs> I'll bet they do. And then you just print off the PDF and you have everything converted. So you can easily run this. So keep that in mind. Thanks again, folks. Love doing these GM tips. Um, I'm going to mix some of the adventure paths in as we go along with other topics to kind of keep it fresh. So I just wanted to let you know that. I uh, hope you have a great week of gaming and adventuring. If you've got any questions, Rick M. the GM with, without a K, Rick without a K, um, on Twitter or uh, R-I-C-M-O-H 45 at Gmail. Thanks.